you're a software engineer, you should not buy the new Apple Silicon Macs. At least not yet. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, and my job is to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. One week ago, on November 10th, Apple announced three new computers, a Mac Mini, a MacBook Air, and a MacBook Pro 13-inch, all of which are using their new Apple Silicon M1 chip. This new Apple Silicon moves from the historically dominant x86 architecture to an ARM-based architecture. At their core, each architecture supports only a specific set of fundamental instructions, things like addition, subtraction, logical operators, etc. All software running on them must conform to those instructions. ARM supports a reduced set of instructions, which enables it to be more power efficient, but also means that software written for x86 chips can't run directly. Apple's providing a translation layer, called Rosetta 2, that enables x86 programs to run on the new chip, but with a 20 to 25% slowdown. That being said, even with this slowdown, we've seen some pretty mind-blowing performance benchmarks trickle out as people start to get their hands on these machines. For most people, these devices appear to deliver an incredible price-to-performance ratio, and Rosetta will provide the necessary compatibility for applications in the short term. That being said, for software engineers, there's four reasons that I think you should hold off on buying one of these systems. Number one, virtualization. While Rosetta allows you to run most x86-based applications, it does not support virtual machine apps that virtualize x86 platforms. Because most of the web runs on x86-based Linux servers, this is a big challenge. Even though there will be ways to build cross-platform software to run on those servers, it will require extra configuration and be harder to test. VMware hasn't committed to a timeline yet for when they'll add support for their virtual machines, and it's unclear whether applications like VirtualBox will be ported at all. Number two, Docker. Related to the previous point about virtualization is the topic of containers. If you've looked at my channel page, you'll know how much I love containers. Just yesterday, Docker put out an announcement about their efforts to get Docker Desktop for Mac ready for Apple Silicon, and it's not quite ready yet. They're blocked by a few upstream dependencies, including Golang, and even once Docker for Mac is updated, it will still require using their experimental BuildX plugin in order to build multi-architecture container images that will run on those x86 servers I mentioned before. As the multi-architecture support continues to improve, I think this will become less of an issue, but until Docker is supported on these Macs, this is a showstopper for me and for many other software engineers. Number three, Homebrew. If you're a software engineer using a Mac, undoubtedly you use Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager for installing and managing tons of different software packages. While Homebrew itself works with the new architecture, many of the underlying packages do not. There's a GitHub issue that's tracking support for these packages, so you should definitely take a look there and see if the packages that you rely on have made the jump yet. Number four, external monitors. The final reason that I think many software engineers will want to wait before running to the Apple Store to pick up one of these systems is external monitor support. The Mac Mini variant does support two external monitors, one at 6K over Thunderbolt and another at 4K over HDMI, but the two laptop variants support only a single external monitor in addition to the laptop screen. So, if you're someone who prefers the portability of a laptop, but also wants to have multiple large monitors when you're at home, these new Macs won't work for you. Hopefully, the next set of computers that Apple announces will add support for these multiple external monitors, even for the laptop form factor. As you can see, these new Apple Silicon Macs might not be the right choice for software engineers, at least not yet. Many, but not all of the points that I've raised will continue to improve over time, and I'll be tracking them closely to see how things develop. Are you going to upgrade your development system to a new Apple Silicon based Mac? Let me know why or why not in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to let me and the YouTube algorithm know. If you want to continue down the DevOps rabbit hole, consider checking out one of my other videos over there. Again, I'm Sid with DevOps Directive, and remember, just keep building.